Well, I, I'm going to demand. I'm going to demand something right now in this conversation that's about to happen. Okay, I'm going to demand it. And you don't usually do a lot of demanding. You're a pretty Listen, easygoing cat. I'm just going to say, and this is for everybody. It's not just for you, Mr. Festus Azili. Thank you for coming on. This is for everybody now. If anybody thinks what the other person said was stupid, just call it out right there. So if if if, if we ask a stupid question, Festus, don't be afraid, man. Just right then and there. Be like, it's a stupid question, Mark or Dibs. Okay, is that a deal? Can we do that? Will and Dibs. What's, the, what's going on, fellas? Hey, man. <laughs> hey, man. Well, Festus, you what's know good? what's going on. I'm not going to say that's a stupid <laughs> question, but we're doing a radio show. And thanks for coming on, Festus. And we for appreciate that. Sure, uh, sure. I will always yeah. come hang out with y'all because it's always good to talk basketball with you. By the way, when it, it, to answer your question right there, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes... You have to think about a question and really process it for it to really hit you. Like, yo, why would why would they ask me a question like if Jordan Poole should play in the fourth quarter? Because you need a guy like that. You need points, according to Chris Mullen. You always need points, especially if you want to win games. So um, I think that it was blown out of proportion the way I said it. But it's always funny, man. It's always fun to go back and forth with you guys. Well, as Mark likes to say, uh, do us a favor and please keep our name in your mouth. That's right. Yeah, it's good for business. That's right. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so Festus, if we get to the end of this and we haven't asked a question yet that you're going to talk about on the next TV broadcast, just say so, and then we'll say something even stupider so that you can. <laughs> exactly. All right. Give me, give me, give me some feedback. Give me something we can run with, and I got you. Okay. All right, fine. Let Let me try right now. Oh, hey, I got a couple hey, too. Hey, Festus, this Steph dude's overrated, huh? I mean, did you see this crap in the last minute yesterday? What are we going to hey, do with this watch. guy? If you say that Steph is overrated, I don't even have to get to you. I think the Warriors fans will probably get to you before you get to the car. I'm I'm staying out of that one. All right. Okay. I'll I'll, I'll ask you a real one then. I'll I'll, I'll ask you a real one. Um, Who's got – and take the Fox thing out for a second because I don't know how that's actually going to play out. But – it, 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 I think Warrior fans all feel like, okay, they're back even. They've got the advantage. And I'm over here going, I understand you, but they also have won, like, no good road games all year. And and so we're just assuming they're going to do that this week. Who has the advantage right now? Dude, I, first off, as a basketball fan, I love this series. And for one, I'm from Sacramento. So these are my guys. I almost took a coaching job over there. So... I love Mike Brown, what he's done for this team. They're not coming into the, this series thinking, well, we're just happy to be here. Darren Fox is a leader for that team, is really putting on and showing the world that he is the clutch player of the year. Like, I, I've never seen someone so consistent, especially with those floaters. Those floaters could go either way, but he is like a layup for him, and he's just so precise with his attacks and his ball movement, especially there at the end of the game. You, you can see, and I mean... Everybody was thinking in their minds, as soon as they threw the ball to De'Aaron Fox at the end of the game, like last game, and Draymond was staring at the top of the three-point line, I I was like, I I don't really know what's about to happen right now because this is a full head of steam to De'Aaron Fox, who was the clutch player of the year for the game. And I was was very nervous. So both teams feel like they could be up 3-1 right now. The the Golden State Warriors felt like game one they could have had with Andrew Wiggins missing the last shot. And the Kings felt like they could have had that last game with, with Harrison Barnes being the last shot. So it's been a very well-played series, both coaches going back and forth. Obviously, Mike Brown is sticking with his starting lineup, and he's saying, I have to adjust my guys and tell them to adjust their game to this. And then Steve Kerr has a bunch of different tools that he can start, not start, uh, play different matchups to uh, Garden, uh, Garden Deer and Fox. Bonus has been having a little bit of a tough time. He's had some, he's put up some good numbers. He's always going to put up numbers. He's, a, he's an all star, but he hasn't dominated the game that like he has all year long. And so they have to put a lot of deer in Fox's shoulders. But this team is well coached and they're playing well. And both teams feel like they're still in it. And as we always say, the old adage, it's not a series until somebody wins the road game. So this next game is really pivotal. Yeah, I was telling Mark that, and he was trying to tell me that the series then wouldn't have already started, even though we've enjoyed four games. So I'm, I'm kind of with you on that, Fest, as I, Mark and I have gone back and forth on that, that age-old adage. You, you mentioned Sabonis. If you were coaching Sacramento, what would you tell him in terms of counteracting what the Warriors have done? Because laying off Sabonis has been an effective strategy. 
he's got to he, he's got to stay aggressive like that. The when he has the ball at the free throw line and 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 Kevon Looney is all the way in the paint. I feel like those are the plays kind of like with Draymond. Draymond's being aggressive himself because he understands that I have to keep the defense honest. And so those possessions where it turns out to be empty possession, you're playing to the Warriors' hand. So you either shoot the ball, you drive, or you go uh, dribble handoff where you, it's like a really good screen on the man. If your man is underneath the basket, then that's a disadvantage to him in those plays. And so, you know, Draymond's doing a great job of handling it. And yet, I mean, last night he was 3 for 14. I think that's what it was or three for 15 maybe, but still his activity level made them honest and it, that opened things up for other guys on the backside because now he's getting dunks and, and so now you have to respect that. Then he starts dishing to Kevon Looney for dunks and other guys. So those are the kind of things I think Sabonis should be doing because, I mean, he's a guy that they played, they ran a lot of the offense through during the regular season. So now it's a lot more ball screens for Sacramento Kings. And like I said, putting a lot more on Malik Monk and De'Aaron Fox and Schultz. So, Festus, this will sound like an, a, an obvious question with maybe an obvious answer, but I want to hear yours specifically. Like, we know the Kings will, will, will not be as good if De'Aaron Fox is not in there. But but in your words, how how does that affect Game 5, and, and, and how does that change the matchup? What was, the, what was your question? <laughs> it was, how would it change the matchup if De'Aaron Fox is not there? Oh, oh, um, well, I mean, what he's been doing, he has been responding to everything that Golden State Warriors have done, right? Every time you see a, a, a big play by the Warriors, I feel like on the other hand, you have De'Aaron Fox leading the charge. His speed, his quickness, and transition has been one of the big factors in this playoff series so far. And then also on the back end of that, he's also, when he gets down to the paint, because nobody can stay in front of him. You know, at the end of the day, we have guys like Jonathan Kaminga, Andrew Wiggins, we got Draymond who was on him last game, and Gary Payton, and then Moses Moody as well. But it, the truth is, the speed of this guy, it's, it's unbelievable how quick he is. Fox is actually a very, very good uh, last name for a guy like him because he's really quick, he gets into the paint, and then he can kick out the shooters. Now, that changes their whole offense. I think they got to go back to Sabonis as the guy who's playmaking for guys. And Malik Monk, if De'Aaron Fox is not there, Malik Monk has to be the guy kind of like Jordan Poole has been for the Warriors team uh, as he's been in terms of starting lineup. Davion Mitchell has been such a lockdown defender on Steph Curry. Would you anticipate that Mike Brown maybe makes a shift to try to match him up more with Steph Curry and maybe inserts him into the starting lineup? I mean, lockdown, like how? Cause, like he's uh, really harassed him and he's made it very difficult on Steph Curry. And I, I appreciate you following up and not just – Waving that off as a stupid question. You got me nervous, <laughs> Festus. I'll be honest. <laughs> so here's my thing. is that Steph Curry is a great player. He's always going to do what Steph Curry does. Your job as a defense is to make it hard. And Davion Mitchell has been doing a great job. He's, he goes out there and he is really he's, he's being physical. He's making him drive and, and really running him off the three-point line. But Steph is going to make those shots. Like, Steph makes tough shots. That's, that's part of his deal. Those shots that people think are bad shots, Steph makes it at a 42 or more higher rate. And so that's great for even a good shot. You know, so I think that his job is to continue to hound Steph, yes. And you can see some of that with Kevin Horder because Kevin Horder is, is a great shooter. But he has to chase these guys off the screen so much that you lose your legs. You can't, you, you can't make those shots anymore. So maybe more of them on him, more of Damian Mitchell on him so that those guys can get their get their rhythm. You know, Kyler Murray got going last game. You know, it's the guy who's another guy who's, who could be an X factor for that team. So you just can't let those shooters get going. And Damian Mitchell has been a good guy for them to put on him. And then when he's making shots on the other end, he's also making the the Warriors respect him on the offensive end. So he's working on both ends. Fastest, we talk a lot about those role players. And while yesterday was a win, it was not a great day for the Warrior role players. Let's focus in on Jonathan Kaminga. Well, I don't know if they can get him on the floor in this series. What are you seeing with him right now? Um, you know, the tough thing about um, having such a deep team is that you have a plethora of weapons, and you, it's kind of like just select whatever weapon you have for this, for this battle. Like if you have Draymond Green going to the bench, that takes away from minutes from guys like Jonathan Kaminga, Gary Payton, uh, uh, Moses Moody, 
these guys can all help the, the Warriors win. It's not about if they can change the tide of the game. The, everybody can in this series. You saw Jermichael Green come into the game last game and change the temperature. You've seen Moses Moody come and change the temperature. So it's not about if they can help the series. It's just about what style of play Steve Kerr wants to go with. And so I, I thought that he did a great job of being aggressive. The, the game Draymond was out, right? Game three, Jonathan Kaminga comes in the game. And you have to remember, i got to give people context. The game before that, Alex Lynn, the big man for the Sacramento Kings, the backup big, comes in the game. And while Sabonis is out, he really sets the tone with aggressiveness. He gets the ball. He dunks on people. As a matter of fact, he dunked on Jonathan Kaminga. What does Jonathan Kaminga do when he gets in the game? First time he gets the ball, he takes it down the middle of the lane at the big man and wants to break his neck because that's just the aggression that you have to play with when you're in the playoffs. This is not a young guy. The way he plays is not like a rookie, right? He doesn't play like a second-year player. He plays like a guy who's very mature for his age. I think part of what you're seeing with him is development is that he's starting to understand that I get on the floor with defense. And that aggression led to the rest of the team and bled into the rest of the team. So I think Jonathan Kaminga can play in any series. He's one of our most athletic people, one of the most athletic people in the NBA. And when you talk about young, quick athletes in Sacramento Kings, a guy like Jonathan Kaminga can definitely affect the series. But with the, with the game plan that this team has, you can't go away from what Steve Curry is really trying to do right now. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM and HD1 San Francisco, always live on Twitch, YouTube, and the free Odyssey app. And we're hanging with Festus Azili. Clay Thompson, Festus, and his performance yesterday, it seemed like he hit the hugest of buckets late in that second half when they needed a three. Clay was there with a three, and defensively, he's really stepped up as opposed to late in the regular season. What do you make of Clay Thompson in kind of a quiet 26 yesterday? You said he's he stepped up now as opposed to late in the regular season? Defensively, yeah. Oh, defensively, okay. I um, thought you had me yeah. again, Festus. Oh, boy, that scared me. Yeah, boy. <laughs> oh, my gosh, y'all. Y'all are... <laughs> can, we, can we clear the air, please? It was, oh, Festus, it's, it's clear, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm on the edge of my seat here. I, I'm, you know, it's like eggshell radio over here. <laughs> I actually really love you guys, and that's part of the reason why I came off. So thanks for having me. Clay Thompson... Uh, defensively, I mean, you know, uh, I think that this is the competitive clay that we've all known, right? The reason why he became such an amazing defensive player in the first place and part of his career is that he just has always wanted to do the little things to help the team win. And I love to see the fact that he's getting his legs underneath him. And you just see him, he's always had that will. At the start of the season, when he wasn't shooting the ball that well, he said, just give me time. And he ends up being the guy who leads the NBA in three-point makes this season. Had one of the best Feb- months of February, one of the best months in his whole career in February this year. So, like, this guy's going to keep getting better. And, and, you know, the foot speed, all the things, you just continue to adapt to the game, this is, which is actually one of the reasons why it's so ridiculous that Andrew Wiggins jumps right back into the game after missing two months and is able to defend and score at the rate that he is. This team is really deep. It's really loaded. And, and at the end of the day, playing small is the style that they've chosen to play, and it's been really effective for them. And it'll keep being effective. But Clay Thompson is doing a great job, and I'm really happy with that competitive fire showing. Uh, Festus, you know that, that we're big fans, right? You know that we're big fans. I know fans. this. That's okay. why I'm here. All right. Okay. And, <sighs> and, and, and you know that we're expecting you to talk about us again on Wednesday night, right? What do you want me to say? What what say? I, what, what 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 are you inspired to say? I I mean you know I like have to what, sleep on it like I did last time yeah because you t- last time you said should Jordan Poole start in the or play in the fourth quarter and here's my here's my here's the reason why I get upset about questions like this because <laughs> I feel like a lot of people go game to game they're like well this person had a good game this game that's this true person had a bad game and that's so true this, like and sometimes people look at it as what have you done for me lately. I think Jordan Poole, this season, he is really still trying to find his niche. But you have a guy who's averaging 20 points a game. And so the guy is really, like, this is him learning how to grow. He played all the games, all 82 games this season. you got to give him credit for that. And he keeps showing up in whatever different roles that Steve Kerr has in place. Are you playing when Steph is out and having to fill those shoes? Or playing when Clay is out having to fill those shoes? Or are you coming off the bench? There's a lot of different roles that he has to play. And you know he's a guy that can really score the ball. But I have to give a lot of credit for him and his development as he turned into a playmaker as well. So I, I just see him growing. And you've got to also remember that 
I saw Steph through his maturation process. I didn't just see him as the finished product that everybody sees now. And it's crazy that Steph at year 14 is still getting better because I think that he's better now than he was when he was in, in, in MVP season. So it's just I, I understand the processes that people have to go through to become the player that they're going to be. I think Jordan Poole's a future all-star in the NBA. And that's, uh, you know, that's hopefully going to happen with the Warriors. But Festus, respectfully, it was just the notion of him finishing games. And I couldn't help but notice in Game 4 yesterday, after that reckless turnover, Steve Kerr took him out of the <laughs> basketball game. So that's, that's, that's just where the, uh, you know, Mr. Azealia, that's just kind of where, where the, the point had come from or, 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 or originally. Sir. Oh, I mean, but you've also seen him. You've seen him finish games as well, right? We had a. Yeah. I think the game where I said that he had 18 points in the fourth quarter. So, it, Steve Kerr's substitution makeup it has nothing to do. Like just in the moment, what are we going to do with the guys that are playing right now? Who is playing well? How can we get them on the floor? Who is not playing as well as these guys? How it's 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 all a it's a it's a test match, right? That's what the coaches do, and so. That's, you can't really base that off the fact that if he can do this as a career, because he's going to have to finish games for this Golden State Warriors team in this playoffs if they have championship aspirations. Uh, Fastest, I've been trying to get him to let it go. Man, I, I really I have. I, I really it's... have. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, th- you you are always welcome here. Always. A- and uh, I'll just remind you one more time, you're, you're always welcome to talk about us as well. I appreciate y'all okay. very much, man. I was expecting y'all to put me through the ringer today, man. You guys are very nice. I appreciate that. Uh, if they were down 3-1 fastest, it would be all Steph all the time. And have you ever called timeout in your career when you didn't have one? What is Curry thinking, Festus? I have. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, leave my guy alone. <laughs> uh, you know, and um, I have always known Steph to be someone who's very aware of time and score and everything. So, that I, that was very uncharacteristic of, of Steph, especially after that that challenge. Um, I, you know, I, that, that you know what happened. They challenged him. He didn't know that you know we were unsuccessful or whatever it was that he didn't know that it was the last time out. But um, Draymond came out and said you know he should have been the release guy when guys double Steph and he wasn't there in his position. And so Steph called a timeout so he doesn't turn the ball over. But it was just an uncharacteristic play, and I'm happy that the Warriors won that game. Yeah, despite that, because that would have been really that would have been a hard pill. Ooh, man, no Ooh, doubt, boy. no doubt. Yeah, hey. and and Steve Kerr put it on him, and and uh, you know I, I I understand that, and and uh, you know we'll ask you that next time if you think Steve Kerr has been a good coach, and if you think that this has been a good <laughs> run for the Warriors, or or if it's been overrated. He's coddling Curry. That's, yeah. I guess my question for you, though, is um, how many championships do you think he should have won instead of the, the 40 he has so far? Six. He should have won six. That, that would make him a good coach now. I Seven, I yeah. think, would put him over the hump for me fastest. Come on. Yeah. Okay. All right, that's fair. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm argue. Good. All right. Good. Com- common ground. Fastest, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, fellas. The I best. All right. There you yeah, thank you. That's Fastest Azili. Um, and uh, I can't wait for uh, now. I really can't wait for Wednesday night. I was already excited for Wednesday night. Now I can't wait for what happens after the game on Wednesday night.